I'm Greg Enger, beer director for the Neighborhood Restaurant Group, and this is your craft beer and brewing tip of the week. Taste is the simplest way that we experience flavor. The more complicated and complex way we experience flavor is through smell, aroma, the olfactory senses. So that's why if you just plug your nose and eat a bunch of food or drink a bunch of beer, you're not gonna really get that full sensual experience you get from enjoying the aromatics, right? If you plug your nose and drink something, you're gonna taste sweet, sour, salty, bitter. You're not gonna parse the nuances of the aromas that way. That's where we get the particularities is in the aroma. But taste is still very important and it is the second step of food pairing. So once you've figured out your intensity and you believe that you kind of understand the, the kind of flavor and mouthfeel uh, intensity of the beer and food that you want to put together, then you're going to think about the taste. This is debatable. I go by seven kind of major tastes, three of which you find often in beer, a couple sometimes, and two you really don't, or at least shouldn't. Sweet, sour, and bitter are three of the seven tastes that you find all the time in beer. The others, salty and spice, like capsaicin heat, can find from time to time. I guess people used to make jalapeno and habanero beers more than they do now, so you could make an argument for that. And yes, of course, salt is added to many beers, including classic German Goza, or I guess I would say modern German Goza. I don't think the original German Gozas had salt added to them. But yes, so you will see sweet, sour, and bitter beers, some beers with spice and heat and salt. And then the last two, fatty flavors, which we know like fat richness on the palate, and then umami, which is one of the, the, the more difficult flavors to express. But we think of umami, we think of savory, we think of dashy things made with seaweed, fish sauce. We think of mushrooms and tomatoes, fish in general, that kind of savory, almost meat-like flavor on the palate, which I'm not gonna say has never been added to or experienced in beer, but probably shouldn't be or hasn't been that much. So those are the seven tastes. And before we even talk about the nuances of how the aromas are gonna interact and that kind of the next step of complexity of pairing, we really have to figure out what's gonna work as far as taste goes. So taste can interact in two basic ways, complement and contrast. Complement is like on like, contrast is two you know, disparate flavors that hopefully work well together. They kind of balance each other out. So yes, if you have a sweet beer, you can seek out sweeter flavors. And when I say sweet beer, I don't necessarily mean like a pastry stout. This could just be a moderately attenuated Bach style lager that shows nice malt richness on the palate, some residual malt sweetness there, or some British style barley wine, even if dry, can showcase kind of caramelized sweeter flavors on the palate. If you pair a sweeter beer with sweeter foods, they tend to, sweetness tends to mellow on both ends so that the other flavors in the beer and the food can kind of come up to the fore. Same with bitter beers. Bitter beer can be a, a hoppy bitter beer, it can be a roasty stout porter bitter beer, or it could be a, even a tannic beer. And you can seek out some bitter foods of that, cruciferous vegetables, leafy greens, some of the things like that, radicchio. Those can go nicely. Green sauces will mellow out bitterness and mellow out the green flavors at the same time. And then obviously with acidic beer, you can do the same thing. So if you have a tart, kind of classic Berliner Weisse, you can serve that with some ceviche and hope that the acidity, and know that the acidity in the Berliner Weisse is going to mellow, the acidity of the ceviche will mellow, and that some of the other flavors, like the, the grainier wheat flavors of the Berliner will come up where they can match really nicely with some of the more delicate sweetness we may find in that raw scallop. Definitely complement is a thing. But when we're talking about the four other flavors, the salt, the heat, the umami and the fat, we're looking less for complement and more for contrast. And of course, you can also contrast beers with sweet, sour, and bitter foods. Uh, probably the most classic beer and food pairing in the world is a perfect example of this, and that's stout and oysters. So stouts, with their dry, peppery, roasted, slight bitterness, are the perfect kind of foil in an opposites attract kind of way with a bright, slightly sweet and briny bivalve. While they're not 
complementing themselves initially, they become this great kind of contrasting complement where both flavors, they don't neutralize each other, but they exist alongside one another and in a complementary way. If you're interested in learning more about pairing amazing beer with amazing food, just click the link below.